suburb to pick up my... What's going on eastbound? I'm heading over to pick up... I'm heading over to pick up my uh, three-legged forklift. And the traffic was moving smoothly. It's like 1.32 in the afternoon. You know, normally shouldn't be any delays. And then uh, all of a sudden everything stops. So I put on my four-way flashes, you know. Because you're always afraid that the guy behind you or a gal behind you will smash into you. And now you heard on the CB, they're saying there's uh, crashes in the, in the far left lane, in the fast lane. And in other news, after I did that video yesterday, so yeah, I sent an email to, uh, to the Mac dealer saying that I'm not going to be spending three thousand dollars for 24 horsepower increase or 90 torque so it's totally not worth it so i might look into that uh, fleet air filter which i believe is uh, far superior to to k n because i had the k n one on my i tried it but the thing is like uh, i don't know if i mentioned this but in order to clean that filter you need to carry the entire thing like the housing with the filtering material, they're not, you cannot separate them. Whereas with the, so it's very awkward to clean it. It's a huge filter. Whereas with the fleet air, you can just uns, unsnap the filtering element, which kind of like looks like, you know, like a piece of carpet. And then you leave the actual metal piece, the casing, in the truck. So you can just fold that filtering material put in your, uh, you know, bag and go wash it somewhere, to your, you know, at home or in the hotel or even in the shower. It's much easier to deal with because those k and filters, I don't know, I didn't like them. It was, yeah, the truck had uh, a bit more power, but it was a pain in the butt to, to clean it. And that's what I need. I just need a bit more power so that it's easier on the truck climbing hills with uh, heavy loads. And as you saw, if you saw the previous vid, uh, to get the same result that I would get spending $3,000 on new differentials, all I need is 24 horsepower. And that's nothing, you know? If this was a pickup truck, geez, I would uh, just, you know, modify my exhaust, open up the, the income or influx of air, put in a tuner, but this truck, I don't want to use a tuner because it's it's a, you know 505C plus. It already has 1860 torque. Uh, I, I believe it's already maxed out from factory because there's still reserves, but not much. Uh, one guy told me that normally uh, engines have about only 75% usable horsepower, and they keep the rest, you know, for emissions and stuff like that. So that's why you can always use a tuner and get more power out of the engine, out of the engine. So maybe mine still has it, like some reserves that I can dip into, but I'm just afraid to mess with, you know, this uh, emission system. Not to mess with the actual emission, but I mean, if I increase, if I put in a tuner, I'm just afraid that I'll start getting some, you know, lights on the dash, you know. That it might affect my, my DEF, DPEF, whatever. By the way, that Rotella T6 I put in, it was specifically designed to decrease the amount of soot in uh, contemporary diesel engines, so it might it might prolong the life of the DPF filter. And this is the reason for this jam, so we have is what, two car, one minivan, one car, it looks like the minivan smashed into the divider because the bumper is all screwed up and then the, the rear car probably smashed into the minivan. 
because as always they follow like one second apart at uh, 140 kilometers an hour in the left lane so anyway hopefully now the traffic will pick up because I need to be uh, at the shipper at 2 o'clock and now it's 136 but the good news is that uh, I, I, I was checking on the map I'm going to Toledo Ohio which is just uh, 500 kilometers or 300 miles from here Today is Friday, and my delivery is Monday. Love it. The rate is great. No topping. I just need to figure out a way to uh, load this forklift because it, it has a third wheel is in the middle. It's gonna be awkward, but uh, we're gonna keep shooting. I'll turn the truck around so you guys can see the loading after I disconnect from the my float. So it's gonna be an interesting video. Hopefully, I don't have to drive the three-legged forklift myself because I'm not an expert at three at three wheel vehicles. Last time I actually drove one, I still remember, I was five years old. It was in uh, at the military camp where, where my dad served in uh, Hungary, just outside of Budapest, Hungary. And this was a uh, Kind of like a competition where kids would uh, uh, you know, try to outrun each other on these tricycles, you know, those bicycles that have three wheels. That was my last experience with a three-wheeled vehicle. So, so I'm 53. Back then I was five or six. <laughs> so it's a big gap in driving experience so I, I cannot trust myself to operate this thing so. but this looks like it's a plant it's a factory where these things are made and usually guys at the plant are, are okay to deal with it's not a port where it's all trade union and nobody is willing to help you. oh boy there's another another uh, crash over there on the right I see uh, flashing lights something else happened here and look at this that's remain on the current row in three kilometers or at 401 east mcdonald cartier freeways yeah another two cars two cars what happened here okay the first car has a little smash bumper probably hit something the uh, the, uh, the divider the concrete divider or maybe it's the same car that was involved in that crash. But what's funny is that look at the sky. It's uh, like my father used to say, the vidimost. What did, what did they say? Visibility is sto na sto. <laughs> Basically, like 100 by 100, like 100 kilometers in each direction. Right? Dry road. No rain, no snow, sunlight, and uh, you know, people crash into each other. Well, in loading this thing, let me tell you guys, uh, it was not easy. You see the focus on the left, and it took a very long time because the the wheel, that central wheel, um, closer to the trailer, it was right in the middle. Okay, and the problem is, is that in the middle of my trailer, I have the pin like the safety pin that secures the gooseneck so there was one problem and then of course uh, my the center of my trailer is open <laughs> so that's what we're doing there we're trying to figure out how to load this which side which way should it be facing 
and then yeah I said you know forget that I said I want the single wheel towards the truck otherwise I'll have to move like 20 boards and you see me now yeah you see the guy turn around and meanwhile you see me busy pulling those super heavy boards and I'm putting them uh, in the area uh, next to my uh, to the wheels you know this guy here I think yeah he came with his own wrenches and uh, he's uh, un unscrewing that uh, the pin the safety pin otherwise that wheel with the, the, the wheel in the back now of the photo to just go right over it And the guy tried to climb <laughs> and this thing has no torque and no pulling power whatsoever and uh, they put uh, I think they put some uh, yeah they put some pieces of wood under it uh, in front of my uh, ramps and then yeah that big forklift that tele handler it brought uh, a ramp so they figured they would put that single ramp in the middle of the trailer so that that single wheel in the back can uh, climb over it. So like I said, it was a really a complicated engineering procedure to load this thing. Mostly because of the, uh, of the design, of the three wheel design. But what I learned about this machine that it's quite unique because not only does it have a, a all-wheel drive but it's a four-way directional like this thing can move sideways forward backwards basically um, and I remember once I was delivering aluminum logs somewhere in Ohio just basic a basic uh, flatbed load and that's what they use they use these machines to pick up uh, aluminum logs because then they can they can go sideways basically alongside the trailer like this thing is really useful and plus you'll see later on uh, uh, it'll have an attachment called a spreader spreader so so that the machine can pick up uh, very very long loads oh and yeah that guy he said you know that uh, single ram we better hook it up with a chain otherwise uh, once the forklift starts climbing it'll start pushing that uh, uh, ramp away so I use my 3 8 chain to just, you know, keep it in place. And I increased the speed four times because this was taking forever. And I'm not even showing how I secured uh, everything, but the actual, the fourth of it was only 20,000 pounds, so I just used four chains. And the lucky for me, uh, the frame had uh, eyes where you can put the chains in. At least that's, you know, we thought of that. And this place is actually the, the factory. It's a small factory where they make these uh, specialized uh, forklifts. All right, so yeah, only with uh, after some high RPM was achieved, the forklift was able to go. Uh, the front axle was able to go up. 
but as you can see, the rear wheel is still on the ground. And that high tone, that means that he's like really revving up the engine. And it's not a diesel engine, it runs on uh, propane. But the heel, basically the ramp, turned out to be too steep for this guy. So he couldn't do it by, him, by, by himself. He tried various speeds, various uh, RPMs. And then that guy over there, that's the forklift with uh, extendable forks. That's what they figured they had to do. Yeah, he positioned the forklift uh, at the very end of my trailer and extended the boom. And now we see a guy coming from the shop with a whole bunch of chains because I said, you know, my chains, they're super heavy and they, they, they're too short. So we hooked up uh, a couple of chains to the mast on the forklift and you know it's only minus 10 celsius so clearly we're having fun Almost there. And finally, the three legged forklift made it to the top of the deck. 